everybody. Welcome back. Jiu-Jitsu 2000 here today. I'm back. I have another good video, good information today. What I want to talk about is candles. And the reason I'm in, in my house next to my stove is because I'm going to be laying out some items. And it's kind of cold out in the shop, so I'm filming it in the house. Um, but regardless, let me talk about candles, okay? Now, these are candles that don't cost a lot of money. They're very inexpensive. They're easy to make and they last a long, long time. So stay tuned and I hope you guys enjoy the video. Okay, everybody, here's what we have right now. This is a can of Crisco. This is a vegetable shortening. Um, it comes in a solid form, as you, as you already know. I'm going to open it up. Pull this tab off here. Got a little bit of shortening on there, so let me see if I can kind of rub it. I want to get every bit that I can. See, I kind of clean that up. So this is full of shortening, right? So what we're going to do is we're basically going to pop a wick right down the middle, and we're going to use that as our candle. So stay with me. Okay, everybody, let me take a brief moment to talk to you about some cordage and more specifically wicks now right here I have a piece of number 18 bank line now this is a I believe it's a three ply cord now you see that it's got three three plies this is something that I do not recommend that you use as a wick okay next in line I have another piece of bank line. This happens to be a number 36 bank line. This is great stuff for around camp, just as the number 18 is. But again, I don't recommend using that either. Now here, next in line, I have a piece of paracord. Nope. It's great around camp, but not very useful for wicks. These three, the reason I don't want to use them as a wick for a candle is because they have properties about them that are that are not going to complement us when we use our candle. In, in other words, they're not made of natural type fibers, okay? The fibers that are made in these are, for the lack of a better term, oily type fibers, and when you burn them, the material itself burns up, and, and it doesn't carry those wicking qualities that we're looking for. Now this piece here, this happens to be a piece of yarn, and, and more specifically this is cotton yarn, 100% cotton. Comes in a little spool, I pick it up at Walmart, back in the sewing section, okay, this makes excellent wicks for candles and all kinds of things. So that's, that's one that, that we can use, is this cotton yarn. The second piece is cotton string, okay kind of like a thin rope this works good also for making wicks again because it's cotton and again I pick this up at my local hardware store this stuff works really well for wicks the one here on the end is just a piece of natural fiber type twine this is like jew twine or you could use hemp twine things like this obviously you know they're made of natural materials and they work really good. They're very fibrous um, type materials. And they work good for making wicks. And those come in a little, little bit of twine like that. That's what they look like. So again, I'm going to remove these three, the bank line and the paracord. Again, the properties in these, they're not, they're not useful for making wicks. They don't have that wicking quality to them. And these three, I want to talk about. Okay, so these are the ones that we're going to have to choose from. Whoops, I dropped one. Okay, so these are the ones that we have to choose from. Okay, now there's something that I want to talk about. And that is, will the cord stand upright on its own? So if I hold this up, you see this cordage, it stays upright very easily. It's very rigid. That would be a good candidate for a wick. Especially on things like this, because 
this uh, Crisco, as it gets hot, it'll kind of burn and it'll kind of, not burn, but it'll kind of lose its solid um, nature and it'll turn into an oil basically on the top of the candle. So we need something that will stay vertical even if there's liquid around it. So this would be a very good choice. This piece also has that same quality. You know, it, it has that rigidness to it. It stays upright for the most part and it works well for twine. Or excuse me, for a wick. Now, let's talk about the cotton yarn. Now look, see what happens there? This will work great for candles, but it does have that small downside of it doesn't want to stay upright. Now, if you use this for a candle, you'll get a beautiful flame, everything's fine, but you'll have to keep setting that wick up. It'll fall down and it'll get underneath the liquid portion of the candle, and a result of that would be that it would put itself out. So now that I've discussed the different properties of the wicks, I'm going to choose this wick for our project today. I'm going to move everything else out of the way. So I'm basically going to take my can of Crisco. Let me see if I can zoom in and get you a little bit better view. Ooh, where am I going? Right there. Okay, so I'm taking my can of Crisco here. And I'm just going to take this wick. If you have some sort of, like I'm going to use a uh, chopstick, I'm going to try to find the middle of the Crisco as much as I can. And I'm just digging a little hole down there. Pulling that out, setting that aside. Now I can lay this wicking material, this, down into the hole that I created. You want to push it down until you feel it touch the bottom of the Crisco. So I'm having a little bit of trouble so I'm going to just kind of fold the bottom. There we go. We went down all the way. Now I'm just going to kind of take my chopstick here and whatever's left on the chopstick I'm going to put on my finger and just put around the top of the wick right here where it comes out of the material. From here I'm going to take a small scissors and cut about an eighth of an inch above the height of the Crisco. So I have a little bit of excess I can use for a different project. So now my candle's ready to light. And there we go. Didn't quite get it all the way. go we're all lit up it'll take it a little bit to get going and in the meantime I'm going to kind of dim the lights around it a little bit so you can see the flame a little better kill this other light so there is our Crisco candle very easy to make It's out a good amount of light and heat for that matter. And as it burns, it'll make a little pool of liquid. You can see that around the top of the wick. These things will burn for a long, long time. Okay, you can see that I have three different sizes cans of Crisco. I have one pound, three pound, and six pound cans of Crisco. Now one thing I wanted to make sure that I noted in this video 
was that the one pound can is the only one that I would recommend actually sticking a wick down in and making candle out of, you know, leaving it in the container. These bigger ones I really like to use for taking glass jars, something like this, which happens to be a one cup um, jar. And I take the Crisco out of here, I heat it up, and I pour it into these little jars. I put my wick in. Or you could use like a knife and pack it down in there, but I like to pour it. Um, I don't make it real hot, just warm enough for it to turn into a liquid so I can pour it into here. And once they get poured, I let them solidify. And then from there, I'll stick a wick in. I'll either put them in the refrigerator, or I'll put them outside, put them in the freezer, or something like that to get them to solidify. Now, if I'm using the good um, sturdy type cordage, like this, this stuff, if I'm using this stuff that has plenty of ability to stand up on its own, I'll put the wick in while it's a liquid state. Now, you might be wondering do I put something on the bottom of the wick to hold it in? And that answer is sometimes yes and sometimes no. As you can see, this one, I just shoved it straight down and I'm not worried about nothing. Now, when it gets to the end of the life of this candle, that could create a small problem because there's you're basically going to have a wick standing on nothing. And the chances of it standing upright, when once that turns into a liquid, could be slim but since it has such a long run time that's a fair trade-off for something like this now these ones I like to burn them all night long and so I sometimes use um, bottoms to put my wicks on now this in my hand happens to be the bottom of a soda can just the bottom of this soda can that I've cut out and that works pretty good I can put my I can put my string through this hole and put the rounded side up and just drop it down in there and that would be my wick holder and it's a perfect diameter for these little jars works pretty good and it holds the wick up and so it'll burn all the way down till you're just about out of fuel another option is to take a just a piece of wire and you can tie the wick around something in the center and make sure that it's tied so that it'll stand upright so you can set it down in the jar and it'll stand upright that's another option and here another thing with the wire same thing same option just a little bit heavier and um, it's it's gonna sink down pretty good and stay pretty stable so anything like these works pretty good as options to put on the bottom of your wicks. Okay, while that's burning, I want to show you this one. Okay, this is a candle. What I've done is I've taken the Crisco and I basically heated it up in a little pan and I poured it into this jar and I put a wick in there. And then while it was still in a liquid state, I I had to hold the wick upright because I used yarn, that cotton yarn, and I put it in the freezer to help it solidify. And this turned out to be a great candle, except like I mentioned earlier, I had used yarn, okay, and I didn't use that solid string, so what happens is this wick keeps breaking down inside, keeps folding itself down, and then I have to keep um, fixing it. Whereas if I had used a better wick, like I explained a minute ago, it would have stayed upright much more easily and it would have made a better candle. Now, this still makes a good candle. It's easy to light and it burns um, for a pretty good amount of time. In fact, this little candle um, has one cup of Crisco. And so, depending on what size of Crisco you're going to use, like, let me move these down so you can see what I'm talking about here. 
there's different sizes of Crisco that you can get, right? So this one burned for between 40 and 50 hours, okay? Works great. Now this size, this is 16 ounces. Now one cup is 8 ounces, so that was about 40 hours of runtime. Well, one pound is 16 ounces, so a burn time approximately on this one would be about 80 hours, at least 80 hours. Now this one is 3 pounds, so I'm guessing that a burn time on something like this would be around 240 hours. Now this big one happens to be 6 pounds, I'm guessing 480 hours of runtime. So that just gives you a little bit of an idea of what kind of run times you could expect to get out of these candles. Okay, here's what one of these candles that I spoke of earlier looks like when it's done. On the bottom, you can see that I have a funny little paper clip down in there. I just used a paper clip and I tied my string around it. Now, in this one, this was one of the first ones I made, I used a piece of yarn from Walmart, okay, it's that cotton yarn, and it works good, but like I said, it has a tendency to fold over, and it puts itself out. So if you're going to be wanting this thing to burn all night long, you got to make sure that it's not going to fold. You want a good string that's going to stay upright. See, I got to dig that out and relight it. Now, don't get me wrong, this makes a great candle. It's just kind of a maintenance candle. It's something that you got to keep your eye on and make sure that it stays running. Another option, this was kind of like the second generation. I used a small block of aluminum that I had sitting around the shop. A little bit larger uh, bottle. And I used the rigid type wick. Now this one, you can leave it alone and it'll stay burning for days. And you don't have to worry about that wick falling down. Now, this last option is something that I keep in my car. Okay, I keep one of these in the back of my car. Again, I have a small block of aluminum in the bottom. And I use the good solid string. This thing will burn for a long, long time. Makes a good flame. Let me turn these lights off. Some people were asking, you know, do these candles make a, a smell? Do they have any kind of odor? Is there any kind of, do you have to have a lot of ventilation? My answers are no. They don't make a lot of smell. They don't create an odor. Um, you know, it's, is it safe? Is it toxic? No, it's, it's, it's not toxic. You're using vegetable oil, Crisco, okay? This is stuff that you use to cook your food with. So yes, they're perfectly safe. Uh, you know, but these are just a few options that I wanted to share with you guys. Some things that you can do um, to make these candles. And, and again, they work great. Um, you know, one this size would be good to keep in your car. I keep this one because I'm always out screwing around. And the cool thing about this is and you, you might laugh when I say this, but when I'm out there in the in the woods and maybe I catch a fish or something I need to cook or, you know, I want to deep fry some potatoes or something out there, I can melt this down and run it through a piece of, like, t-shirt material and, and kind of clean the oil and I can use it to cook with. So, and that would be, you know, what I'm saying is since they're candles, you're not really putting any anything negative into the Crisco. It's still Crisco at the end of the day, so you can still use it for cooking. So again, everybody, I wanted to say thank you <laughs> for watching my channel. Oh, I'm really zoomed in close there. Thanks for watching. Thanks for joining me. I appreciate the support to my channel. Thank you for all the comments. 
kind words, private messages. Feel free to leave comments again and subscribe, like, share, thumbs up. And as always, have a beautiful day, everybody. Thanks again. Bye-bye now.